The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. This is Upschool Book Reviews. My name is Graham Brown. If you like books, if you like reviews, if you're interested in reading business books that can help you become better at your craft, then check out my free course, upschoolbookreviews.com slash course, where you'll find my top five picks of books that will help you become a better entrepreneur. That's Upschool bookreviews.com slash course. So today we're looking at The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. Now, Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People turned out to be a life-enhancing book for me. You know, there are many self-help books out there that teach us you can have it all, and you get there just by manifesting that stuff into your life. Well, personally, I think that that's rubbish, And The Seven Habits really explains why it doesn't work. The Seven Habits teaches us that success comes from what we practice every day. It's the hard work that requires focus and self-discipline. You can't simply evoke a nice house into your life by thinking about it in your mind's eye. You've got to get your hands dirty and do the stuff that most people don't want to do. You see, most people don't like habits because most people let's face it, lack self-discipline. That's why we're bombarded today by BuzzFeed-ready titles like Learn Japanese in 60 Minutes a Day or The Secret. These are the silver bullets. Like diets, people try them and fail, but their memory is short enough that they simply bounce from one trend to the next. Being Effective, however, requires a different approach. It requires constant work. Like meditation, you've got to keep bringing yourself back. Covey describes this as flying the plane. An airplane spends 95% of its time off course. And like our daily lives, planes are buffeted around by the winds of circumstances. But by constant refocus, the pilot keeps bringing the plane back on course and landing it safely at the destination. So let's have a look at Stephen Covey's seven habits. Habit one, be proactive. There's a space between what happens in the world and how we choose to act on that event. If we react, we become victims of events, we lose control. If we choose to be proactive, however, we take control back. Think of an example recently, sitting in traffic in your car, you're in a traffic jam, you get annoyed, you react. Well, how do you change that situation? Being proactive really means being able to choose your response to that situation. You could say, well, ain't nothing I can do. Beeping my horn ain't going to get us quicker to the destination. All I can do is use this time. Maybe I'll put on an audio CD or listen to an MP3 file and listen to an audio book. I can use this downtime to catch up on my reading. Habit two, begin with the end in mind. Stephen Covey likens this to the golf swing. Now, golf swings are hard to perfect. I try to do this once. It takes a lot of work, a lot of coaching. You go into the coaching room with the video and all that kind of stuff. And what happens is constant practice gets you closer and closer to the final form. And pros, what they do in golf is they actually visualize the final form of the body as you follow through. So if you imagine a swing from lifting the club back behind your head to following through all the way around back to the other side in front of your body and lifting it high above your head once again. If you can imagine what the final form looks like, that snapshot, of what you look like at the end of that follow through. It really helps your brain follow through and all the steps that lead up to that. Now, sports psychologists have long documented this power of visualization and achievement. Some athletes would visualize their success. They would actually see a medal ceremony happen. And that helps them get to that place. This is not the secret again. This is not manifestation. This is different. This is about training your brain to assume that these things will come into your life and be prepared for it and not be somehow fearful of these things happening. Because once we become fearful of these situations, our brain finds another route which takes us away from that destination. 
and it's not just in sport as well. Gandhi famously would visualize his follow through, so to speak, the end in mind when he went and did a public speech. He would visualize everybody to the right of him clapping and cheering, then people in front of him clapping and cheering, and then people on the left of him clapping and cheering before he even got on the stage. Habit three, put first things first. Most people major at minor things, and Stephen Covey has a quadrant which divides our tasks into important, not important, urgent, not urgent. Most people spend their time in the important and urgent quadrant. You think about it, that's how we live day to day, firefighting. And what Covey says is that we have to move away from this quadrant into the quadrant of important and non-urgent. Why? Because once you're in that quadrant, you're actually working on your agenda. By contrast, when you're in the quadrant of important and urgent, you're reacting to other people's agendas. You're firefighting, whether that be client requests or emergency emails or whatever. And the time that we spend, by contrast, in the important and non-urgent quadrant is the most valuable time of, of all. And this is the time of creativity, of planning, and so on. Habit four, think win-win. You can't do it alone. That's how it is today. Even though in the education system that we are trained, indoctrinated within, you have to go alone. If you were in a test situation and you turn around to your fellow student and compared answers you get thrown out however in the real world you have to cooperate like this so the key here is to surround yourself with the right people with the right win-win mindset and it sounds a little bit sort of buzz talk i know but what is that in reality see there are people out there who are win-lose those are the people that if you win, they lose. They have a scarcity mindset. They see a fixed amount of resources. So every success that you have takes away from them. And likewise, for them to be successful, they have to take away from you. For them to win, you have to lose. Now, these people may be outwardly supportive of your goals and your endeavors, but secretly inside, they're eating their heart out. And that's why it's important to surround yourself with win-win people who don't criticize your efforts or try to bring you down. These are the people that will propel you to success. Habit five, seek first to understand, then be understood. This is the habit of empathy. Now in business, empathy works. It's not just a fluffy, fuzzy thing that you can throw into your corporate prospectus. Empathy really works. And it's one of the most powerful marketing tools, whether you are a multi-billion dollar organization or a single lifestyle entrepreneur. Apple and Starbucks built their businesses on empathy. For you too, you can build your business on empathy. If you're a startup founder, how important it is to seek first to understand then then be understood. What does that mean? If you have a product, the first thing you should do is not push the product out there and try to get people to understand that product. The first thing you should do is seek first to understand, which means go out there, talk to customers, find out what the pain points and frustrations, hopes, fears, and dreams of your customers are first. And when you understand that, then you have permission to get your product out there and share your story with them. Habit six, synergize. In any team, you need balance. Now, this can be in your business, personal relationships, colleagues, teams, etc. You have a strength, you have a weakness. Work with people who complement those. You have blind spots. Work with people who complement your blind spots. If you're a developer, find a sales guy. If you're a sales guy, find a developer. Cooperate creatively in this way. You know, don't focus on 
trying to cover your blind spots yourself because naturally that's where you're weak. It's better to work with somebody who can do that for you, work with you on that basis, than to try and self-edit yourself. You know, that never works. That's trying to proofread your own posts. What you need is somebody who can do that for you. Habit seven, sharpen the saw. This is the most important habit, and it's the habit of self-renewal. Stephen Covey talks about the Japanese concept of kaizen. Kaizen in Japanese just means constant evolution. It's the principle that guided Japanese automotive manufacturing post-war to become the most successful industry in the world. Now, by using Kaizen, Toyota and Honda developed the lean management, lean manufacturing ideology, which later became the foundation for the lean startup movement that we know today. It's basically learning. Learning is the key to success. It works in business and it works for you personally. If you're not learning, you're falling behind. So successful entrepreneurs are all passionate about learning. That doesn't mean reading articles. That means reading books, taking time and investing in themselves, in courses, in books. You know, a book is an amazing thing. For $10, you can change your life. Where else can you get that kind of impact in your life? So on that note, here are two quotes on learning that I've personally gained from reading the works of others. Peter Drucker, the management guru, once wrote that the only skill you'll need in the 21st century is the ability to learn new skills. And Mark Twain said, if you don't read, you have no advantage over the man that can't read.